Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. I will tell you what, like I do each and every week, we are on the road doing something a little bit different today, and we're going to pick mushrooms, and apparently, I don't know who it was, Uncle Perry, but somebody told everybody else, now everybody's we're heading to, mushroom they're all heading to the woods. Right. Well, it's going to be rough competition today with all these people. That guy's even got a dump truck up there. <laughs> He must be expecting a pretty big load. Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's show. I'll tell you what, like I do each and every week, we are out doing something a little bit different again this week. And today we're gonna to be doing some mushroom hunting and I'm pretty excited. I got the mushroom critter right here. This guy can sniff out a mushroom for 200 yards, believe it or not. Hey, but we're with Zach. Hey Zach, how's it going here it's today? It's great, it's a beautiful day. It is, boy, I tell you, we appreciate you uh, inviting us over to your property. What an absolutely beautiful beautiful piece of property you're down in southern Wisconsin here prime mushroom territory too right yes yes it's uh you know we got a lot of good tree diversity a lot of elms um and we got the perfect conditions for it so it do and timing is everything for these it things it sure is it sure is uh you know it's shortly after a rain here and they were popping really good the last few days and hopefully they're still standing more have uh, happened so right Hey, yeah. so why don't you introduce uh, your friend that you have? This is buddy Austin. Austin, yep. Hey, we got Austin, and we found, I don't know where, <laughs> we picked him up on the side of the road, Uncle Perry. He was actually coming out of somebody else's field, and I said, is that Uncle Perry? So we slammed the brakes on and said, hey, we're going over to the southern part of the state. You want to join us? And he's like, babe, that That's sounds well. good. Yeah. Hang on your hangies. Let's go find some shrooms. I bet you there's nobody in the whole country that has a skunk that can find mushrooms. I guarantee you that. This thing is bread. Some people have dogs to find birds. Some people have dogs to find sheds. Some people have dogs to find blood trails. This guy definitely has mushrooms all the way. Oh, let's keep going. I think he's on some. Look my turkey tail on the mushroom stump. I got my knife and sack, gonna harvest a bunch. Mushroom on the stump, mushroom on the stump, mushroom on the stump, mushroom on the stump. I have nubs for fingernails, so I don't have that technique down, but uh, yeah, I just get right close to the bottom, just cut them right at the base, and uh, no dirt, keep the, the roots in there, and uh, yeah, beautiful. I see that reishi mushroom on the hemlock tree, gonna go get my ladder and bring it to my baby. Mushroom on the stump, mushroom on the stump, mushroom on the stump, mushroom on the stump. that trying to be sneaky this is so oh it is beautiful so Perry let's talk a little bit about that I mean this is uh, an elm tree right here yeah, the elm. you can see the white bark breaking cutting the crack off all your limbs are dead on top it's prime first year tree so this, how long will this tree actually produce? Any idea? I'd say maybe two years. Okay, two, that's what you get out of it. It's not a real big tree, but it's it's perfect right now. Oh my gosh! I almost stepped on it. Look at that stinker! Oh yeah, nice, perfect. Oh, look at that one. Wow. That is absolutely. Oh, look at you! Look at that! Wow! Oh, that added right to it. Whoa. That's a beautiful sight right that there. That is a beautiful sight. So you're the first one that I know that it finds mushrooms under other trees besides elm trees. Yeah, they never cease to surprise me. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of when I first started, I didn't know the difference between an elm or what have you. So it's just basically any dead tree. And so apple, oak, okay, um, maple, uh, even white pine, um, ash. To me, it's the easiest thing to do is just go find a dead tree, you know, kind of look up at the canopy, see yep. if you're not seeing any leaves or buds, or is it tipped over, is the bark peeling off, is it a fresh from a, like a logging or a cut? I've, I've been at one of the craziest morel finds I've ever had is a, in October one year, a friend cut down a huge oak tree and we hit 70 degrees a couple weeks later and there were a do half dozen giant yellows. You know, sometimes you get tunnel vision on things and you've had really good luck finding something like in this situation under all the elms and all of a sudden you talk to somebody else that is finding them under other trees and all of a sudden you're thinking to yourself, boy, I went by a lot of them other trees. So it's not just in the spring. Well, it's, it's just in the sense of, you know, just when you're outside, you just kind of take, you know, take note of what you're seeing and right. you can find morel spots 
it to put in your back pocket and you, you kind of start and, training yourself yeah, right yeah. or normally you wouldn't think oh there's just another dead tree yeah. but yeah no that makes a lot of sense yeah hey this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at mike's country meets the finest jerky on the planet you know these guys are spotting these mushrooms like nothing like there's like yelling at me when we get into them hey don't step on this one don't step on that one for me, I gotta make sure when I come and do this and once we get into a, an area where we start looking is to always make sure I put my cheaters on. It makes a night and day difference, you know what, having that good visual. The other thing is, make sure you guys, you wanna definitely carry a pair of binoculars with you too, especially when you're like in big territory like this so you can have a better idea of what is way out in front of you as far as the trees that you're looking for. Hey, again, this week's tip of the week brought to you by our good friends up at Mike's Country Meats, the finest jerky on the planet. That is no, absolutely beautiful. That's just white, that just came up. That just is awesome. beautiful. There's another one right here, Pear. Oh, he's got one right here. Look at oh, you do good. Yep. Got him. Oh, good job, buddy. Look at this. Oh, yours is a giant. Oh. Mm. That oh. is as fresh as they get. That's mm. as fresh as they get. That's so moist. Hell awesome yeah. Good. That is so good, Stinker. Oh, you agree? Yeah, I agree. You know, they always say one thing about elm trees, you can always tell if you don't know, is by you take the bark and it's kind of like, feels like a sponge. I think it's one of the only trees that has that kind of bark on it. Oh, he got one. Nice. What do you got, buddy? It's not a tree, folks. It's just a morel. Look at that. This is a, a stake here. Look at that. Let's see that one. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's an eater. Yeah. Yeah, this guy right here, too. A weird looking one. I'd grown up under a stick or something. Hey Zach, I am always nervous when it comes to different types of mushrooms as far as knowing what is edible and what's not yeah. edible. And so we just came across these. And so what kind of mushrooms are these and why does this one look so much different? I take it it's probably the same it kind, is, but yeah. why does this one look so much different from that? Yeah, so these were definitely the more, say, mature, been out longer, been cooked by the sun, so they're starting to crack and okay. their life cycle, they're starting to wilt away. Yeah. These are a little newer. These are all golden oysters. Golden oysters, golden okay. Golden oysters, and when they're really fresh, they are just the most vibrant gold color. You could see them from a long ways off. They're, they're beautiful. They are. So one, they always grow in clusters. And one of the ways you can tell is that they have decurrent gills, which means the gill, they're gilled first on the fertile surface. That's okay, always that's one of, interesting. Always the one, other than morels, you always want to check the fertile surface, the underside of the cap to see, to help identify. And these are gilled and the decurrent gills means it runs down the stem. Okay. So if you see that, the golden color, they grow in clusters on diet, dead wood. You got yourself a golden oyster and they are delicious. No, you're saying that these are a little too far gone yeah, themselves? Yeah, There's usually better. when they get to about this big and this color, you can tell they've been in the sun, they're usually full of bugs. And okay. Unless you like a little crunch with your... I uh, don't mind a little crunch <laughs> with my food at all. But Good yeah, fiber. I have a feeling we'll find some more. Kind of interesting to be out here, uh, obviously, looking for morels and run across different types of mushrooms. You know, for me, hey, folks, I am no, no expert. Stinker might be. Zach is definitely. Uncle Perry definitely is. But there's a couple of us guys in the woods that are not experts at this, and uh, we struggle a little bit. You know, I didn't grow up in the generation where we had all these games to play and computers and all that stuff. You know, I grew up in the old school, it was kick the can and stuff like that. So, you know, to me, this is normal to be able to go outside and, and find something to do versus being in the house. And you're gonna find something that's actually edible and you can go back and enjoy it, you know, Absolutely. while you're cooking it up for dinner. It has to be like a second year tree and it's still producing. So the bark is still hanging on the tree and you can still find them there. But once the bark is always gone, you usually don't find too many anymore. Pheasant back? Pheasant back is the sort of the slang term. I couldn't tell you the scientific, but it looks like feathers on the top. Oh yeah, okay. The pheasant, and then they're porous on the under, underside. And these are pretty good eating. What you'd do is you'd cut around the stem like this, just take the outer edge. Okay. And fry her up just like everything else, and they're pretty good. When a guy is looking for mushrooms, realistically, and you have a good track of land, you know, 100 acres, a couple hundred acres, whatever, is there one end of the, the 
property that's going to produce at a different time than the other? Yeah. And, and why is that? So let's kind of go over that a little bit. Yeah, so w at least for morels, it, it's, they sort of follow the soil temperature. And so they, normally the southern facing slopes will go first because that gets the warmest, gets the most sunlight uh, okay. this time of year. Yep. So those will pop and then they go to the east facing, that's the next warmest, and they go to the west facing. And then following, finally the north is the last uh, the last area, type of area to get uh, where the, the ground cover is you know thickened up and the, everything's leafed out. And that's kind of where we're at now because the, the mushrooms, the last couple trees that we found, uh, there wasn't as many and most of the ones right. we found were older ones that were basically yep. coming right till, to the end. Exactly. So, okay. Yeah, and a lot of things like that I try to do myself and I think is a good tip is sort of see what's what if you're even if you're not finding them that that's telling you something take note of you know where what the foliage looks like uh, the ground cover and maybe the you could be in a morel area that's already run its course and uh, then you just need to focus your areas on a different you know whether it's facing slope or area where that's not as developed hey zach i'll tell you something uh, you know what you told thomas on the way up here to tell me that uh, to tell you told him to tell me that you were an ex no expert but i'm going to tell you something Man, I've learned a lot of stuff from you, and I'm a little Appreciate bit older than you. But I'll tell you, it's not just the mushrooms today. Um, there's a lot of other things, like the, the rubbing post that we just that you created right there is very cool. Yep. And now here's another thing that I, personally I feel um, is probably more important than any food plot there is, because basically you always have crop ground around in these kind of areas where we have our land. Right here, putting water in for these animals is yep. absolutely everything. And I'm gonna tell you something, a little story that you guys, that I learned last year. So we have a farm up in Minnesota, and we have a trout stream that runs through there. It is the most pristine water you would ever imagine. I would drink out of it in two seconds, right? And I have, right? But last year, we had a dry year up there, and the deer left our property, even though we had that trout stream running through there, because the deer, honestly, they do not like to drink that clean, cool they water. Really they good. like dirty stagnant. water, stagnant uh -huh, yeah. water. And that's why they pick up a lot of, obviously, things like EHD and stuff like yeah. that, because that comes from that stagnant water. Mm -hmm. And deer are grazers anyways. Deer don't just go into, if this was all corn behind us, a cornfield, they don't just go in there and eat corn until their bellies are full. That's not the way they operate because it'd be, it's too much heat in their system. It would actually kill them deer. Um, so they're browsers. But water they have to have the trails that have been coming because this was a trail out to the feeding yep they have gone heavier just because this is here the water hole yeah, yeah. and again amazing that you know um the, the things you learn when you just kind of open your eyes up in in, in nature and it's yeah. cool again to, to talk to other people and learn different things but having water holes like this in your property unless you have ponds and stuff like that all over this is so important yeah. right here Shout out to my father. He is the one. This is his idea. Yeah. And uh, smart man. It was, a, it was a good one. Yes, it is. I do a lot of birding. Yeah. And uh, and obviously for hunting and stuff. And yep. All the the eye caps were peeling off. It sounded like a whole beach was in here just grinding. I, they're sticky. I had scratched lenses, and these were all off. And they I sent them in. They took care of it in about a week, and it came back almost as good as new. And I'll tell you something, that is 100% accurate. I'll tell you that's if you're looking for any kind of optics, there's nobody but nobody that has a lifetime warranty like no. Ortex does. And return, like you said, usually within a week, a you, week got, yeah. you got it back. So that's an impressive company. That's it why sure they've is. grown as much as they have. I didn't know what to do with myself when I, <laughs> these were gone for a week. It was, that's, I made it through, though. You did. Hey, 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 we're going this way. I must have missed something. Oh, there's a double. Did you know there's a double here? Look at that. Wow. Here. I just walked right you gotta be absolutely, you? Look at you. Dude, you gotta be kidding me. Larry. Like you have the eyes of an eagle, right? What is, what? You're not gonna believe how many you missed. Come over here once. One, two, three, four, five. Whole different perspective this time out mushroom hunting is, again, we're so used to just looking for elms and today, you know, we definitely have found that there's a lot of other species of trees that have morels underneath them. We might wait for a fresher batch than this one. We're gonna leave him. That one's got some crunch to it. So a lot of, this is called, the, it's the, the slang term. It's not a morel at all, but they call it a false morel. And a lot of people who come out will pick these, okay. not a lot, but some have, and these are, 
toxic if not cooked right. They are, huh? It won't kill you, but... Yeah, uh, it'll make you sick, huh? Yeah. All you gotta do is cut it in half and you'll see that the morel is really smooth. I mean, this is really kind of... A lot, and, lot of surface yeah. area and convoluted and all that stuff. Looks so. like the inside of an ear. Yes, yes. Don't pick these babies, pick these. Yes. They look appetizing. They sure do. We're gonna have quite the uh, mushroom medley in the Right, that's the great part of it. They just put these a wild onion, I believe. Dig down into here. Look at that. Oh. There's a wild onion. There a leak. Go. A leak, you call it? I think they call it leeks. I don't leak. know. I yep. just need. Ooh, just like onion. Give that a try. Yeah, I will. That is really good. Yeah, good. Mm, really good. Amazing when you keep your eyes peeled and yeah. you're trained to look for certain things, what you can actually find yeah, these out pop, in the wild. These pop the same time morels do. You can get a mm, really Them are really good. Yeah. Look at that one. Oh. We're gonna leave oh. a few of those other ones, but yeah. we're gonna take these puppies. Oh. Anything stinker. The stinker's like, cut that baby He's now. Got it. Right? Wow. Woo, that's a jumble. That. Wow. Those are two I think fatties. We got more than enough. I think so. We'll right. leave the rest for the forest. All right. Or Doug. Or Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Kent Anderson here with Warrior Boats, and I'm excited to tell you about the 2024. Warrior Cash Program. You're gonna find out that we are committed to you, the tournament angler, and it will pay to fish out of a Warrior boat in 2024. With tier one events, you're gonna take home a $7,500 check if you win out of a Warrior boat. Tier two event, take home $5,000. In tier three events, you're gonna take home $2,500. Go to warriorboatsinc.com, drop down the owner's tab, go to Warrior Cash, and find out all the details there. Introducing Forever Barnwood. Transform your space with the warmth and character of a genuine Barnwood look. Forever Barnwood offers over 200 authentic Barnwood products. We are commercial and food safe. Our products are available in unlimited quantities while still providing the consistency you need to complete large projects. All of this while still looking like it came out of a hundred year old barn. Forever Barnwood, bring the history inside. Hey, I'll tell you what, you know what? We had just an awesome time picking mushrooms and now I've got a bunch left over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them up and I'm gonna utilize these because I don't wanna waste them. And the best way to do it is basically just cut them up and I'm gonna put them in my dehydrator and I'm gonna dehydrate them and then I'm gonna put them in a vacuum sealer and seal them up. So when I wanna use them again, I have them. You know, when you're storing mushrooms too, uh, what I do is I basically put them in a brown paper bag and then I put them in the refrigerator and they definitely store really well there. So now what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to put them in the dehydrator here, dehydrate them and then put them in the vacuum sealer and seal them up and hey, whenever I want to have mushrooms again, I've got plenty of them there. Hey, I'm going to finish this up real quick here and uh, fire up the dehydrator. And uh, we're going to head over to Leroy Meats there in Fox Lake. And it's always cool to see how all this product is made. So hang on to your heinies. Hey everybody, we're right outside where all the sausage and all these really cool products are made. Take a look in there. I'll tell you what, these guys are working hard to get this done just to keep you guys happy. Tell you what, we're in the back with Dan. Hey Dan, hey. how's it going today? Good, how about you? Hey, you know, one thing we've never done is we've never talked about the great staff that you have and obviously to push out the amount of products and keep the quality where it's at, you have to have good workers. Oh, without a doubt, these guys are the backbone of the sausage and packaging world. Well, I think we should kind of introduce everybody. I would love to. Okay, so who do we all have here? So, on the stuffer is Brian. Um, it's fairly new at it, but kind of a natural. Yeah, it's about 12 pounds a minute we can push out of there. 12 pounds a minute, okay. Um, and then you got Vic, he's going to be hanging today. Uh, Vic's been here for probably about three, four years. He's part-time, great guy on the seasoning end. 
And then you got Dakota, and Dakota's been here for a couple of years. He's our entry entry level sausage maker. Okay. Uh, he does all our weighing, grinding, and helps out where needed. All these guys in here are huge outdoorsmen. And then over here laying out our wonderful beef strips. Marshall, uh, he's our strip guy. He lays out all our beef strips, which is a very time consuming thing, but he does a phenomenal job on it. So never tried them, give them a, give them a shot. Oh. Hey, I'll tell you everybody, they are ready to rock and roll. Basically bag them up right away, vacuum seal them, and use them when I need them. That's the great part about a dehydrator and a vacuum sealer. I personally think it's a lot better to dehydrate them and then vacuum seal them versus freezing them up. It just seems like when you freeze them up, they get super soggy. Uh, it's, they're still, they still taste good and they're still edible, but to me, it's a lot easier, again, just to dehydrate them and then vacuum seal them and store them away. And then when I want to use them, you know what, just cut the bag open, throw them in a pan, ready to rock and roll. Hey, I'll tell you what, Zach and Austin, Uncle Perry, you know what, a lot was learned today and that's the great part about the outdoors. Yeah, we're not fishing, we're not hunting today, but we realistically, we're still doing both of them. We were definitely fishing and hunting, but it wasn't for deer, it wasn't for ducks, it wasn't for turkeys, and it wasn't for any kind of fish. It was for mushrooms, and boy, oh boy, did I learn a lot. It was really kind of nice. I felt a lot more comfortable because Austin and I are kind of on the same level. We really kind of struggle to see the mushrooms where Uncle Perry and Zach, they, they, you know, they, and Stinker, of course, they, they have no problem at all seeing them. Like we do each and every week, want to thank all of our military men and women for the great service they have given us and continue to give us, along with all of our firefighters and paramedics, and no doubt, all of our law enforcement agents. Hey, you know what? An awesome day it was, and you guys, it is a great day to be alive, and the best part is, we're gonna see you guys and gals again next week, and no doubt, thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, one gallon, how much is that? Yeah, one gallon, yep. From hot sauce? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> don't show off all the time, come on. Touching butts. What do you mean? I mean, don't feel bad. I'm happy with one that size. That's the size of three other ones. <laughs>